in? Are they? Okay. Tell the guy. You can tell them we're rolling. We are rolling. Okay, awesome. Okay, so this is the generic. Uh, are you planning a summer vacation around the chance to catch a glimpse of the great American eclipse on August 21st? Even if you're in an area that experiences a partial eclipse, retinal physicians say it's critical for everyone to keep site safety in mind. Today we're talking to Jeffrey Emerson, chair, uh, let me do that again. Planning a summer vacation around the chance to catch a glimpse of the great American eclipse on August 21st? Even if you're in an area that experiences a partial eclipse, retinal physicians say it's critical for everyone to keep site safety in mind. With us today is Dr. Jeffrey Emerson, chair of the safety committee of the American Society of Retina Specialists. Uh, welcome, Dr. Emerson. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Dr. Emerson, what is the great American, why is the great American eclipse such a highly anticipated event? This is a once-in-a-lifetime eclipse. I think there's going to be millions of Americans who get to see this. I'm excited to see the eclipse. The American Society of Retina Specialists wants people to enjoy the show, but to do so safely. And that means having proper eye protection so that your retina doesn't get burned. And what is the danger of looking directly into the sun during the eclipse? The danger is real. I have patients who have stared at the sun and who have damaged their retina. The problem is that direct sunlight uh, is just too powerful and it can burn a hole in the retina and it can damage those important cells in the retina that help you see. It leaves a blind spot in the center of the vision and that can interfere with reading or driving or recognizing faces and it can be permanent. So Dr. Emerson, how can we witness this event safely? NASA has great recommendations. They recommend using um, official solar eclipse glasses that are ISO certified. And you can see that certification right on the cardboard frame of the glasses. Now, if you can't find those glasses, there are other options too. You could use a pinhole projector. Anybody can make a pinhole projector with two pieces of cardboard. And we have instructions how to do that on our website, asrs.org slash eclipse. Okay, and there are some myths uh, going around on what different ways that it's considered to be safe to watch the eclipse. What are the top three myths about this that you'd like to talk about today? Well, first, some people think it's safe to watch an eclipse with your regular sunglasses, but that's not true. Not even dark sunglasses or polarized sunglasses. You really need the ISO certified solar eclipse glasses. Second, some people think it's okay to peek for a quick moment, and you can also uh, not do very well with that. Your retina can get burned even if you're looking just for a short period of time. A third myth is that solar retinopathy is temporary. Unfortunately, um, you can do some damage to your retina that can be permanent. Okay, and one thing that definitely didn't exist the last time this happened was the selfie. What can you say to people who are thinking about uh, taking a selfie during the eclipse or trying to take photographs of the eclipse? Yeah, the selfie issue is a big issue because I think a lot of people are going to want to take pictures of this. Just remember that if you're looking at the sun or facing the sun, your eyes need to be protected. Also, it's not safe to look through a camera lens at the sun or a, or a solar eclipse unless there's a solar filter on the front of the camera. The same is true for a telescope or binoculars. There needs to be a solar uh, filter on the front end of those devices. And where can our viewers uh, get more information on viewing the eclipse safely? Please visit our website, asrs.org slash eclipse. We have a free printable fact sheet with lots of great information. Great. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.